The Orlando Magic have a lot of big free agency decisions ahead of them. The case for and against one of the most popular players on the free agent market, Malik Monk. We dive into why he fits the Magic and why he may not. Plus, salary cap stuff. You'll like it. Coming up on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is May 22nd. It will be May 23rd, 2024. My name is Philip Rosenreich. I'm the senior writer over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to go over the case for and against signing Malik Monk, one of the most popular names out there. I know Sacramento Kings fans are worried about the Magic taking him. Uh, I chatted with uh, Locked On Kings Matt George uh, during the playoff series. Um, we'll get into why he fits the Orlando Magic and why he may not we'll let you decide later on whether you think you the Magic should sign him. And then we'll get into a little bit of the nuts and bolts of what this summer actually is to preview what we're going to talk about on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Obviously, the Orlando Magic have a big need. We're not going to pretend otherwise. We're not going to beat around the bush. The Orlando Magic need shooting. They need volume shooting. They need guys who will be gravity benders and force teams to defend them out at the three-point line. That is... That is an essential need for the Magic to solve this summer. When we look back at the playoff series, Cleveland was not scared of Orlando making shots. And Orlando made enough shots in three of those games to win. And through the first half of Game 7, by the end of the series, they knew, we knew, everybody knew that the reason why the Magic lost that series is they just were not dynamic enough offensively. They did not have multiple ways to get to the interior of the defense, get into the interior of the defense, kick out and make teams pay for defensive decisions. Essentially, the four games Cleveland won, they made bets Orlando was going to make shots, and those bets proved correct. That's what every team is trying to prevent. That's why Boston's so good. That's why Indiana's so dangerous. That's why Dallas is pretty good, because you know they've, got, they've had some guys really step up as shooters. The Magic needs shooting. And so, obviously... We have combed through the list of free agents, combed through the list of trade potential trade targets to try and figure out which players will just be good shooters. It's why Clay Thompson is on the board. It's also why today's topic is on the board too. Lots of Orlando Magic fans have put Malik Monk at the top of their free agency charts, at the top of their free agency list. And I won't lie, he is number one on my free agency list too. And we'll get into some of the reasons why he is here in a minute. It's obviously so much about his shooting. It is so much about the fact that Monk is a truly spurty shooter with two games of 30 or more points, including 37 in that double overtime win over the Magic in January, and 25 games of 20 or more, all coming off the bench, mostly as a bench player. He averaged 15.4 points per game last year and 5.1 assists per game. He shot 35% from deep on 5.9 attempts per game. Well, 35% is not crazy good. That ability to score at a high level, that ability to get downhill a little bit to the basket, that ability to create some passing, that's the kind of table setter the Magic are looking for. That's the kind of dynamic play that the Magic are looking for. Yes, they need a volume three-point shooter. Yes, they need someone who's going to just get up some shots and on some occasions hit a bunch of them. They need a more efficient Terrence Ross. You know, Terrence Ross had that spurt ability. He, the defenses were always scared of him, but he shot like 31, 32, 33% from three. Malik Monk's doing it at 35, 35%. Doing that at volume is big. And it's not just that percentage because while 35% does not feel like a great three-point percentage, Paolo shot 33 this year. Malik Monk is one of the best 
catch and shoot three point shooters in the league, one of the best corner three point shooters in the league. He is truly a three point threat. Last year, according to data from Basketball Index, Malik Monk shot 41.8% on catch and shoot three pointers. He made 51.4% of his quarter threes. He even hit 31.8% of his highly inefficient pull up three pointers. Regard, I, 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 I know some of you have probably been tired of me saying this over the course of several years now. Your value as a three point shooter is not just about how many threes you make, although that is very important at the end of the day. It is also about your perception as a three point shooter. Franz Wagner had a terrible three point shooting year, but defenses still treated him like a three point shooter, and that made him effective until the playoffs, until Cleveland finally just threw their hands up and said, Let's just bet Franz Wagner's not going to make threes. Wagner was still a valuable floor spacer. The same could be said for Gary Harris. I know there's a lot of Magic fans that are kind of done with the Gary Harris thing, and I get it. Gary Harris was still supremely valuable just because of his threat as a three-point shooter. Now, part of the Magic's problem when it comes to their three-point shooting is that they don't shoot enough. They were not only they were 25th, 24th in the league in three-point field goal percentage, but 29th in the league in attempts. You can be a low-volume three-point shooting team, but you better make them. Denver made, Denver shot the fewest threes in the league this year. You better make them if you're going to shoot low volume. Orlando's got to find a way to bump that volume up if they're going to stay at that stay at the percentage of 33% from three. They got to find a way to get that up to 35. If they can be average, if they're third, shooting 35% from three on 35 attempts per game, that's probably all the magic are going to need. And that's something that Malik Monk helps you with. This guy is a shot maker. And so before we get to anything else, he checks that box off. He checks that mark and says, this dude is a shooter. This dude will hit open shots when he gets them. This dude will look and hunt for three-pointers, which the Magic don't really have. All due respect to Jalen Suggs, who's trying to do that a little bit more. Malik Monk is a shot taker. And that's what the Magic need. But that's not just what the Magic need from that guard spot. They need someone who can create a little bit. And this is really where Malik Monk's game has expanded over the last two years. With the Sacramento Kings, he has grown as a secondary playmaker, playing off of Darren Fox, often being able to get downhill himself. He averaged 3.9 assists per game last year and 5.1 assists per game this year. More important than any of that, because he is such a threat to shoot, he is also a driver who looks to pass. According to Basketball Index, he averaged 17.4 drives per 75 possessions. Not particularly strong at getting to the basket, but he had assists on 18.6% of his drives, placing him in the 96th percentile. According to data from Second Spectrum, he averaged 12.8 drives per game that trailed only Darren Fox on that high-powered Kings offense. And granted, a lot of post-ups for Harrison Barnes, a lot of post-ups for DeMontis Sabonis. Those are not counted as drives. He scored only 5.1 points per game off those 12.8 drives, but had 2.1 assists per game. He passed off those drives a little more than 50% of the time. This is what the Magic are looking for. They want someone that can get to the heart of the defense, collapse it down, and kick out to open shooters where they still trust that their guys are going to learn, are going to grow into being better shooters. So now you have Paolo Bate. Let me just posit this for me. Now you have Malik Monk getting downhill, dishing out to Jalen Suggs for three, to Paolo Bancaro for three, to maybe Paolo Bancaro at the basket. This is the kind of thing the Magic are looking for. And over the last two years, Malik Monk has gotten better at, as a playmaker to the point where he's really good at it. According to Basketball Index, the Kings scored 17.79 points per 75 possessions off Monk assists. Again, that's what? That's almost eight, eight assists there. He averaged, this is the cool thing. I really love this stat. He averaged 6.1 high value assists per 75 possessions. That's assists leading to rim points, three pointers, and free throws. That put him in the 93rd percentile in the league. In other words, Monk gives the Magic a lot of the things they're looking for. He is a an excellent three-point shooter with gravity. He is a downhill attacker who will get to the basket and create enough havoc while being unselfish enough to pass out, you know, not necessarily a finisher at the rim, but enough to pass out 
two open shooters, dump down two, two players around the basket. Malik Monk's numbers look great and look like he would be a perfect fit. But, there's always a but, there is a reason to be doubtful that Monk can bring this to the Orlando Magic. We'll talk about the reason why Malik Monk may not be such a perfect fit. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for quick words from our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals who are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So if you can make it easy and simpler with the biggest network you can, that's LinkedIn. They're constantly finding ways to make that process easier, even launching a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process so much faster. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So why not you? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Day 24 7 streaming channel. A lot of us want sports information 24 7, but the places that typically provide 24 7 sports information, eh, they get a little shouty. Make you make you feel a little stressed. Argue about things that you don't really care about. That happens a lot, it seems, on some of these national channels. Well, Lockdown Sports Today is here for you to solve that problem. They are a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news from local experts who know their teams best, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's all part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, every day. Like I said, those those numbers, and they're pretty consistent, and they're pr- pretty consistent with what Monk's draft profile was. Um, you know, obviously he had a rough start in Charlotte. He, he did have a, a drug issue that, that, that required some attention. Saved his career in Los Angeles with the Lakers before going to Sacramento. Um Malik Monk checks a lot of boxes. Uh, you know, I'm going to make a, a case or at least an argument about why you should be a little skeptical, but let's be real. Whenever you're adding a new player to the mix, there's always an adjustment, especially a major player. There's always an adjustment and there's always a potential downside. And so the question, you know, the question is always, can you weigh the two things against each other? How do the scales balance? And I'm not, you know, the reason why I'm starting this series with Malik Monk Um, is A, I already did a podcast with Matt Torch of Locked on Kings, so I was already thinking about it a little bit. Um, But B, because Malik Monk should be, if not number one, very, very high on the Magic free agency list. Having a a, a gravity shooter, having a volume shooter, having a secondary playmaker who can play a little point guard for you in the way that the Magic probably need a table setter. They don't necessarily need a pound the ball in the dirt point guard. They just need someone to make life a little bit easier for Paolo and Franz. Malik Monk checks those boxes. And, you know, for a Magic team that is all about versatility, both positional and skill versatility, Malik Monk fits a lot. There's a lot working in Monk's favor as the Magic prepare for free agency. And we'll talk a little bit about the money here in, in a little bit. But let's make a little bit of the case for why Malik Monk may not be the answer. A lot of it comes down to what we talk about so much with the Magic. This is a team that values its versatility, that values its size. And they're already starting a pretty, you know, Jalen Suggs is excellent in what he does, no doubt about it. They're already starting a pretty small guard at shooting guard in Jalen Suggs, six foot three. Um, Malik Monk is also six foot three, comes in at 200 pounds. He's plenty of size to play point guard, but... That creates a pretty small backcourt for Orlando. And while they can make up for it a little bit on the back end with their size behind them, it, 
it, it's it's a little bit of a fair question, I think, to say, okay, is that too small? You know, are you going to, you know, can, you know, can Jalen Suggs make up for that size with his defensive tenacity? The real question with Malik Monk is going to be about his defense because a Sacramento is notoriously not a good defensive team. Well, you know, we, we can, I think we could say that. I don't think anyone's gonna be offended by that, but Monk has been low on just about every defensive metric. Average only 0.9 steals for 75 possessions, low on steals. That's not the craziest thing. He's low on deflections, 1.62 deflections for 75 possessions. Um, According to NBA.com, opponents shot 46.1% from the floor with Monk as the primary defender. That's only 0.3 percentage points better than expected. So again, he's not a particularly disruptive defender. And while he does well getting when they get into the paint, I'm not worried about how much a guard defends the paint. This could all suggest that maybe Monk would be better in a defensive system like the Magics and the Kings, where Sacramento is a poor defensive team. Maybe he would be better in a healthier defensive environment. The Kings were a bad defensive team the last few years. They improved to 14th in the league last year with a 114-4 defensive rating. But Sacramento had a 115 defensive rating with Monk on the floor. And, and again, this is like my shorthand of saying, okay, does this player impact defense? We could sit here and say Monk was a wash for Sacramento's defense. And the team starters all topped the list for the worst on-court defensive rating. So Monk... You know, coming off the bench, but playing a lot with the starters, there's not a lot we can learn. Some of it is, we have to ask ourselves, some of it is really, is Monk, is Monk's offense able to make up for whatever defensive shortcomings he might have? And can the Magic strong defense make up for, make up for him? And, and can the Magic maintain their defense? Really like, frankly, just bigger philosophical question. This is the bigger question, I think, for the Magic's offseason. The Magic finished third in the league in defensive rating. They have one of the top defenses in the league. I, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. But I think the existential question the Magic are asking themselves this offseason is whether, whether, they, whether their defense, um, how much of their defense are they willing to sacrifice to add a better offensive player. I, I think, I think ultimately, I think ultimately, this is, this is the big question Jeff Weltman has to wrestle with. Because inevitably when you're adding a new player, you're, you're, you're mixing up the rotation and we are expecting the magic to add a new player. Um, and so, the question with adding Malik Monk, we'll get to Tyus Jones. The question with adding Tyus Jones, the question with adding Buddy Heal, the question with even adding Clay Thompson, the question with adding anybody that is offensively minded is how much of your defense are you sacrificing? And are you really gaining that much more on offense? With Malik Monk, again, there's a lot of boxes that he checks offensively. Like, I'm not going to, you know, like, Malik Monk is at the top of my list for free, uh, on, at least for free agents. I think that he does check a lot of boxes. I think that he would help this team tremendously. And I think that he would be a fine starter. And, and, and if he settles back into that sixth man role, so be it. He plays with the, you know, we know he can be successful as one of the top six men in the league. Um, Sacramento fans are rightfully ticked off that he didn't get more love for sixth man of the year. I think he finished second this year for sixth man of the year. We know he can play that role, and we know he can take on a lot of these responsibilities. But in addition to these questions about his defense, how does he react to being a starter? That's a that I mean that is something he wants. It's something he deserves to want because he plays starter minutes for the Kings. But it all comes down to what level of sacrifice are the Magic willing to make? What level? How much are they willing to risk their defense on a non-defender? to improve their offense, to get that spacing that they so desperately need. Can they count on Malik Monk, who has never been in a quality defensive team? Played with Charlotte, with Steve Clifford, really didn't play for them. Went to the Lakers, solid defensive team, but you know wasn't asked to defend a ton. Went to Sacramento, not a defensive team at all. No offense to the Kings. We love you here. We're all, we're all for the Kings in, in, in Orlando here. Um, but... 
not a good defensive team. Really, really working to be a better defensive team. Is his offense enough to be that boost? And I honestly don't have the answer to that. Because in addition to all of that, Orlando plays at a much slower pace. So a lot of these stats from Monk, they're coming with the Kings, one of the fastest paced teams in the league, team that loves to get up and down. The Magic are a low possession team. So can he make that same impact on fewer possessions? When you're a low possession team, your defense matters a whole lot because each defensive possession means a whole lot more. Well, are the Magic just going to try and push the pace a little bit more? I don't know. But every free agent we're going to talk about, and even when we talked about Anthony Simons, we talked a little bit about it. It's all going to be about whether their offense makes up for what you might lose defensively. Or whether you believe they can that a new player like a monk can come into this defensive culture and be successful. That's one of the big questions. The other big question is about price. And we'll talk a little about what Malik Monk might cost and also how the NBA landscape is about to change again. We're going to get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at BetterHelp. Look, we all carry around a lot of different stressors, big and small. It's a stressful world out there, whether it's work, whether it's something in your personal life. It's hard. It, one thing you should not do is keep them bottled up. You need to, if you bottle up, it's going to affect you negatively. You need to be able to release that stress in a positive way and in a positive environment. Therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever is weighing you down. I'm someone who believes very much in therapy. Look, I I work a very solitary job. I'm a solo host, working working online. I, I need someone to talk to. And I use therapy as a place to get my emotions out on the table, get a different perspective on things. And figure out ways to better handle th- handle issues in my life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Locked on NBA. So here's the next issue uh, with Malik Monk, and that is price. The good news for the Orlando Magic is they will very much be able to beat whatever the Sacramento Kings can offer. The Sacramento Kings have had Malik Monk for only two years, so they only have his early bird rights. That means they are limited and how much they can how much they can increase his, his final year salary and still retain him using early bird rights. They can offer him a deal that starts at roughly, I believe, $17.5 million um, and, and still retain him under the league's salary cap rules. The Magic, you know, look, the Magic are going to make him a starter. They would probably pretty easily clear $20 million per year. Now, whether Monk is looking for a little bit more or not, that's... That's going to be the issue. It's it's figuring out how to set this deal up for Malik Monk and set this deal up, set this deal up for him. Um, it is going to be one of the big questions for the Magic. And really the question is how much are the Magic willing to pay for a lot of guys? That Franz Wagner, Jalen Suggs extensions are due this summer. I, I, I honestly like as much as we want to talk about all the new players, the most important thing the Magic do this summer is re-sign their own players. And obviously then Malik Monk, probably a 20 to $25 million a year guy. Matt seems to think 22, 23 is going to be the number. Our friend Matt George from Locked on Kings seems to think 22 to $23 million is going to be the number. I think that's pretty close. We're probably looking at a four-year, 90-something million dollar deal. And that feels like a lot. When I was on with Matt, I expressed, you know, I think one of the issues in this negotiation with Malik Monk 
is the Magic don't want to give him more than they give Jalen Sucks. Like, you want to take care of your own guys. It sends a, it just sends a good message. And so I do suspect that a, that Jalen Suggs is going to get like a four-year, 105, $110 million extension. Franz Wagner, if he gets the max, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. If Franz Wagner gets the max, I believe that is a salary start. That's a salary starting at like $38 million. But this is the important thing I want everyone to remember. Everything, every, All this stuff that's happening this summer is happening under the context of the new TV deal. And I, I'm, I think I previewed this and talked about this, but now we're starting to get hard and fast numbers. Um, our friend Keith Smith uh, from Spotrac, Spot which who we will be talking to uh, very, 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 very soon. Um, you know, all reports right now are the NBA is getting ready to announce a new media rights deal that is going to pay the NBA $7 billion per year. They're going to bring in, they're bringing in Amazon and NBC. TNT is going to be gone. It's going to be Amazon, NBC, ESPN broadcasting the NBA for a while. And the $7 billion per year is going to lock in what we all anticipated was going to be the case. The maximum 10% cap growth per year for the next several years. We would expect, we're expecting the salary cap this year to come in at around $141 million. The Magic will have roughly $32 million in cap room. So if they want to go sign Malik Monk for $23 million, go for it. If the cap, in, if the cap increases by 10%, that means it's going to jump $14 million to $155 million. This is where this stuff gets important. And we're going to do some math here. The max salary for Franz Wagner, who's not eligible for the Supermax, the max salary for his extension is 25% of the cap. At $155.1 million, um, his starting salary under a new extension is $38.8 million. And if you give them eight, if you give them maximum 8% increases year over year, you're looking at a four year, I think it's 100, somewhere between 140 and $150 million. I, I, I didn't write down that part of the math and I'm not going to do free the math freehand here. Um, That's a four year. If you get to Paolo Bancaro, who let's all, let's all not pretend. Paolo Bancaro could be getting the super max which is 35% max 35% max salary. If we get to that that's 35% of a 170.6 million dollar salary cap. He would get 59.7 million dollars as a base salary on a super max contract. I believe that is the case it might be 33%, but Paolo Bancaro his extension is going to start at more than 50 million dollars. And the cap is only going to grow 10% each year after that. So why are we bringing this up? A, it's big news. But B, the reason why we want to bring this up now is that's why it's more important than ever to take care of your own players. That's why this is the summer the Magic have to spend. The Magic need to spend this summer because everyone starts getting more expensive inflation's going to be a real thing in the NBA. We're going to see inflation happen <laughs> where guy, where, you know, $20 million is not going to be a crazy salary. $20 million used to be a starter. Now that's going to be a high level reserve. $25 million is going to be a starter. $30 million is going to be a starter. And your stars are going to make 40 to $50 million without batting an eye. That's going to be the reality of the league here. Very, 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 very soon. Salaries are increasing. And this is, again, say what you want about sports player salaries, whatever. This is the environment we exist in. This is what the market bears. The players and the owners have agreed to a roughly 50-50 split of revenue. The league is about to make $7 billion per year from their TV deal. That's going to go, that uh, half of that, or roughly half of that, goes to the players. And so to bring it all back, Malik Monk at $23 million a year doesn't sound terrible anymore. Jalen Suggs getting a, an extension starting at $25 million a year doesn't sound terrible anymore. If the Magic can somehow front load that deal, like, shoot, you've got the cap room this summer. 
go ahead and go ahead and spend a good chunk of that to make sure you get your guy. See if you can front load that that baby, and then see where you're at. You know, in a couple years when you're all capped out. The point I'm trying to make is overspending today is not a bad idea. Taking a contract that feels inflated now is not going to be inflated next year when the cap jumps up another 10% and then jumps up another 10% after that and jumps up another 10% after that. The cap's going to grow exponentially and the percentage of the salary cap you're using on a player you pay for today is going to be nothing. Let's just keep that hypothetical. If you're paying Malik Monk $23 million of a $141 million cap, that's 16% of the cap. That's nothing. If you give him that, let's just say you're giving him an 8% raise. We'll be generous. Give him an 8% raise. That's $24.8 million of a $151.1 million cap is still 16% of the cap. You're not giving up anything in position by paying guys more today. And eventually that's going to come back around and help you out. Maybe when you need that extra room, maybe when you need that player or someone's looking to cut some salary. The salary cap is about to get crazy. This isn't the cap spike here. The cap spike, you know, the reason that the CBA put in the 10% cap on cap on the salary cap rising is to prevent what happened during the cap spike summer. Could you imagine the magic again aligning their free agency money for a cap spike summer? That's next summer more than this summer, but <sighs> that's how you get stuck with Biz Back Biombo. No offense to Biz. Love Biz. Love Biz to death. Um the salary cap's about to get big. And so what the Magic spend today, it's it's okay. Spend it now. Go big now. Because in a couple years, that number is going to look a whole lot more affordable. And all of a sudden, Malik Monk on a four-year, $95 million contract, four-year, $90, $90 million contract, that doesn't feel that crazy if he's the right guy to go for. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. You can find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, tune in, Himmel, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the family style podcasts to your podcast and able listening device. You can, of course, find us on YouTube as well. Just search for Locked On Magic. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. And for even more Orlando Magic content, go ahead and check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. I'm still doing my season recap posts that I normally do on Orlando Magic Daily. That is now on my Patreon page. You can find that at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And as always, thank you for your support. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7. Covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Day now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Like I said, we're going to address plenty more about the salary cap situation and where the magic go and how important this summer is. We'll talk with Keith Smith of Spot Track. That is the plan, at least, for our next episode of Locked On Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.